Hey guys, welcome to episode 61 of Reconstructing Cave Story. In this episode, uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently. It's going to be like episode 12 where I'm just going to do a slideshow presenting the collision theory except for slopes instead of collisions of regular tiles. So Cave Story has eight different slope types. Um, and that's the first thing I want to talk about is how are we going to distinguish them? We could just say, oh, this is type 0, 1, 2, 3. That's, that's useless. That's, actu that's actually useless to me and really makes things more difficult to code. So we're, let's talk about some like names that would help us understand the code better. So we the first and easiest one I thought of was top versus bottom. So these top tiles are the ones that you hit your head on, and these bottom tiles are the ones that you fall on and you walk on. So our first distinction is top versus bottom. Our second distinction is which side is dominant? Which side has more mass on it? And it's either going to be the left side or the right side. So in this case, our left is bigger than our right. So we call these left tiles. Over here in the red box, our, our, our right side is bigger than our left. So we call these right tiles. Finally, we need one more distinction because, you know, if you have three binary numbers, you can make eight combinations total. So we have our tall tiles and our short tiles. So these, these tall tiles are trapezoidal in shape and these short tiles are triangular in shape. Yeah, these are kind of not triangular, but we treat them as triangles, these upper short tiles. But the distinction still stands short versus tall. We could say trapezoidal versus triangular, but who wants to type that much when short versus tall makes the exact same, has the exact same connotations. So the thing we need to figure out for collision detection with a slope is how do we find a point on the slope? So these are the things we're given. We know, first of all, the row and the column of what the, the tile we're trying to determine. We know the tile type that we're colliding with or intersecting with. And we need to, uh, we also know this thing, this thing is called offset. And this offset is the distance from the row to the start of the slope. So I'll go over all the offsets in a minute, but the other thing we're gonna to need to know is either an X or a Y, and you always need to know at least one of one of the two in order to figure out the other. And I mean, you will know one of the two when it comes to writing the code. So we'll get into that in the implementation, so I won't talk about it too much. But in this case, we can calculate the slope of just this one tile as an example. You get delta y over delta x, which is negative one half tiles, because right, y is going down and that's positive. So when you're going up, that's negative. So negative half a tile per tile. So our slope is negative 0.5. And then our offset in this case, the distance from the start of our slope for distance from the row to the start of our slope is one tile. So let's look at the slopes for the upper right slopes it's going to be positive 0.5 and for the lower left slopes it's going to be positive 0.5 and for the rest it's going to be negative 0.5 and then for the offsets you can see the start of the slope for these two tiles in the blue box are one tile so it starts at the bottom left and goes up to the right and then it starts here for at the bottom left and goes up to the right and this is the bottom short right tile and then here's the offsets is zero tiles, starts at the upper left. Yeah, it looks like there's extra pixels, but you just go behind those. And then upper left. And then for the rest of these, these are half a tile. So now let's um, get our general formula. Doesn't matter what tile we use. In this case, I'm just drawing it with the short tile. All these are pretty abstract. And again, we're given the row, the column, the slope, the offset, and one of either x or y. So the general formula then is y minus rho, so that's the distance from here to here, is equal to the slope, which is what we've what I just went over in the last two slides, times x minus column, which is the difference from here to here. So it's just kind of measuring from the tile and ignoring the column and row that the tile is at, plus our offset, which is the distance from 0, 0 of our row column um, I guess it, it's just the, the distance from the, the row to where our slope actually starts. Um, and we need to make sure that our x is between our column and 
our one plus our column. So it has to be our x has to be within this tile. And that's just a condition on the slope. I mean, if our x is outside of this tile, then we can't figure out if we're on, we're not even on this slope. So yeah. So we can get the y equals and what x equals based on y. So it's just taking this formula, which is the slope, the y equals mx plus b, and then just solving for y and solving for x. Um, we're going to assume that we can only collide with the slope side of the tile. Not a big deal because th all the levels that Pixel designed follow this. So yeah, it makes things a lot easier. So now I'll give you an example of a collision check using the center of a rectangle. Oh, so another thing I should note is that you need to use the center of a rectangle. Um, I mean, you don't need to. You can just use whatever side of the rectangle is closest and determine like just any point. If any point is inside of the slope, you have a collision. That's not how Cave Story does it, so that's not how we're going to do it. But I did have to implement it that way to figure out that Cave Story doesn't do it that way. So I'm not being lazy. I'm just you know, trying to match the game. In the left case, in the green case, green rectangle, we'll talk about the no collision case first. So given our center x rectangle, so that's what we're given, we're given the center x of our rectangle and the y of our rectangle, which in this case, since we're going down, is the bottom of our rectangle. And our y slope can be, our y slope is calculated from our center x of the rectangle. So I just wanna emphasize that we're using the center of the rectangle in this case. And then to determine if there's a collision, we just check to see if y rect is below y slope. And in the first case, it's not, so there's no collision. And in the second case, there is, so there is a collision. And again, these checks are specific to the bottom slopes. We don't really, I mean, we check the opposite side and we flip the sign of, or we flip the direction of our comparison. So for, for top slopes and for, uh, X collision checks we need to do it's it's pretty much the same thing except we're given Y center and the X of our rectangle so from the our, our Y center we calculate our X of the X of our slope and then we determine whether or not it's colliding based on if the X of our rectangle is less than the X of our slope um, so in the first case in the green case there's no collision and in the red case there is a collision and again, these checks are specific to left slopes. We'd flip the direction of our comparisons if um, we were using right slopes. So the next thing we need to talk about is special considerations. You might think, oh, slopes are not much of a problem, but they can be kind of a problem. Um, when we're talking about map collidables, we want to update X before we update Y. And the reason we want to do this is we don't want to check collisions with slopes in the X direction. Instead, we move into the slope and let our update Y push us out of the slope. So again, I'm, I'm gonna re-emphasize that for our map collidable, not for our projectiles, but for map collidables like Power Doritos and our player, we don't check collisions with slopes in the X direction. And we only check collisions with slopes in the Y direction. So those, that's the first special consideration, update X and update Y order and not checking collisions. I guess that's two special considerations. The third applies more broadly to than just to map collidables, and that is there's a special rule for collision order. So collision order is the order which we check collision tiles. Um, right now it's it's determined in map.getcollidingtiles and it's just we sort by rows first and then we sort by columns and we sort left to right, top to bottom. And now that we have tiles of differing height, collision order actually becomes important. And if we had larger delta in game units, collision order would already be important, but we don't, so it's not yet. And now that we have tiles of differing height, like slopes, it does become important. So we wanna, first of all, check outward. We wanna start where we are and check outward. So we're going to, if we're going left or right, primary sort columns from left to right or right to left, depending on which way we're going. So if we're going to the left, we wanna start at where we are and check columns outward. And then we want to favor the row that contains center X. And this is just so that we 
this is more for consistency sake. The left to right rule really only applies to um, projectiles. So, but if we're going up or down, which applies to map collidables, um, we are going to primary sort the rows from bottom to top if we're going up and top to bottom if we're going down. This is just so that we go outwards from where our player is so that we collide with the first thing that our player comes in contact with as opposed to the last thing. And this is just so that if there's a, a short slope and a, t uh, and a wall, you don't hit the wall because you're going up or something like that. Something that would look weird like that would happen. And then we also want to make sure that we favor the column that contains center wide. So this makes it look really a, a lot smoother when you collide with two slopes that meet at a point. Um, this way you don't always jump to the right slope, which is what would, or jump to the left slope, which is what would happen with our current collision order. So yeah, let me just give you an, a collision order illustrated. We, I have this um, red box that's just going down. Um, that's our collision box. And these are all the intersecting tiles. So we want to check which tile we're using in order. And the order we want to do is, since we're going down, we want to start with the top row and then work down towards the bottom row. So our first two checks will be with the top two, the top two um, boxes. And our last two checks will be with the bottom two boxes. And then we want to subsort or do a secondary sort favoring center X. Um, so whichever column has center X in it, that's the side we want to start with. So in this case, center X is over here on the right side. So we start with one and then two and then three and then four. So that's something we're gonna need to work on. Okay, now you think that's it. No, there's more special considerations. And this is only applies to walking entities. It doesn't apply to power Doritos or anything that jumps and doesn't walk. So pretty much all we have right now are the player but later on, there's going to be, the, you know, the Gaudis, which are the small bug-like creatures that walk around in the labyrinth. So right now, what happens is walking down a slope causes bouncing. And what I mean by this is we have this bouncy motion over here on the left that you go over to the right and then you kind of fall down. And you go over to the right and you fall down. And you're shuffling between going on and off ground and you can just, it's just, it just looks pretty bad. It makes it hard to jump. And what we want, what ideally we want to have happen is we want to be able to stick to the slopes when we're on the ground so we don't, you know, bounce around when we're going down slopes. Um, I had to try this out to figure out that we needed this and we'll, fi we'll find it. I won't implement slopes or I won't implement sticky collision before we see the problem. So it might be easier for you to see it later, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, ideally we want the sticky motion. So we're gonna have to implement a sticky algorithm. Um, for all cases, we, we have to assume that we're going down because you know it's like you don't want to stay on the ground if you're going up. You don't want to stay in the ground if you're going well, yeah, just going down. Um, so if we are grounded on a slope, we our first condition is we're grounded on a slope, and our rectangle intersects with the slope tile we want to stick to that slope. So here's an example of that. We have, we're, we start off on the left, we're grounded on this tile, and then we want to walk and stay sticking to the tile. And it doesn't matter if, you know, I say if our rectangle intersects with a slope tile, it doesn't matter if it's the slope tile that we're already intersecting with. We want to stick to the slope if we are grounded on a slope and we intersect with a slope tile. Um, the next condition is if we intersect with an empty space and we are on a short tile and the tile below is a wall we want to stick to the wall so this is, might seem complicated but i'll just show you a picture you know it's just like here's the wall down here and we're on a short tile and we walk off of the short tile we don't want to have a short hop in here because that's what would happen if we didn't stick to this wall so we want to stick to the wall um, so sticky collision applies even when we're going off to a wall and if this is another slope then it doesn't matter if this is a wall um, and then we only want it to happen if, if we're doing a short slope. So if it's a tall slope, we want to drop off. So no sticky in that situation. And then if we are grounded on a wall, the final condition is we're, we're on a wall. Not We're no longer on a slope, but we're on a wall. And we intersect with a tall slope tile. We want to stick to the slope. And so this is just this final situation. Again, if it's a tall, tall slope, you want to stick. You don't want to have a hop in here. 
or anything like that or you don't want to bounce up or anything and uh so that's that's that situation it has to be a tall slope because you want to fall off onto a short slope and yeah so that's our sticky algorithm so i'm going to go over a quick summary of what we talked about so we need a quick summary of requirements and uh the first requirement is we need a tile type to determine you know, is it empty, is it a slope, or is it a wall, as well as what type of slope is it, and then later we'll, it will also have a fluid type like air or water, so we'll, that's probably the, one of the first things we'll do. Um, another thing we'll do early on is a, we're going to need a collision tile, um, and it'll be nice, like, because right now we have a collision tile which has the tile type in the row and the column, and then we kind of figure out, like, oh, is it units plus we, we we determine like the top side and the bottom and the position of the collision based on knowing that it's a wall so now we don't know if it's a wall so we need to have a collision tile that can test collision and determine the position of the collision given the side so now that we have either a wall or a slope let's abstract put that abstraction or make that abstraction a little bit stronger uh, so Finally, walking entities must keep track of what tile type they are grounded on, if any. So our player is just going to need to know what tile type he's attached to instead of just on ground is equal to true or false. So finally, that on ground method is going to come to practical use. A way to test sticky collisions um, before testing non-sticky collisions. So we need to determine if there is a sticky collision before we determine you know, if there's some other kind of collision. And that's all I have. We'll get started in the next episode, probably by doing a little bit of refactoring. I'm going to do the collision tile and then kind of clean up our map collidable code because right now we have update X and update Y and they're pretty much doing like the same thing, almost the exact same thing. So I'm really gonna like, clean up update x and update y after i implement the collision tile so it'll just make things a lot nicer to make changes to because right now we'd have like four places we need to make changes to and i'd rather have it be one if i could have it that way so that's what we're going to do first um but yeah thanks for watching guys and stick around for the actual implementation in the next few episodes so thanks for watching guys and happy developing